uh, many thanks for the introduction. So in the next, um, for the first half of this presentation, um, I'm going to take you through some of the in vitro aspects and um, particularly how we view and implement phenotypic screens at EPATEC um, with a concluding emphasis ultimately how we use our proteomics platform to really help us deconvolute the hits that we get out of phenotypic screens, which will be the point where I hand over to Stefan to take on the discussions further. So just to set the scene, I've got two presentation slides here, two introduction slides here um, that really reiterate what we just heard there in the introduction, but I'd just like to play an emphasis here on, the, on the, our role here in the development of new technologies and really new approaches to treat the areas of oncology, CNS, and also inflammation. Um, this is not only target-based, but as you'll see in a minute, we have more and more emphasis on really using phenotypic and with a large emphasis on high content screening to really identify both new chemical matter, new targets, but also to apply those in a regenerative environment really to, to, to really see how can we advance new target space within drug development. So really in the in vitro pharmacology group we're involved in all areas of really the preclinical development chain. So it for really encompasses from target identification and validation, where we're talking like in vitro uh, methods as well as in vivo knockdown and high throughput histology imaging, through ultimately to biomarker development to support proof of concept animal studies uh, preclinical. Particularly within today's presentation, I will hope to concentrate on particular elements of the screening cascade that you see here with an emphasis on particular high content screening, but also subsequently various aspects of our proteomics platform and how those two can be really married together uh, to harness and to really bring forward drug discovery in a more efficient environment. So really the theme of today's meeting, as, as we've seen, is, is the phenotypic screening and how we particularly use it at, at Evertech. But before we get into EvaTech and how we use it, I think we're all probably aware of one of the most cited papers here from David Sweeney in 2011, so Nature Review's Drug Discovery Review, that really sets the scene and, and retrospective analysis of drug discovery over the last, let's say, decade, um, where it's really probably not surprising, shows that phenotypic screening really is at the forefront of, of, of really the new um, INDs and, and new drug development candidates. Um, if you look in first of class, um, you'll see that phenotypic screening is really more productive in terms of bringing products to the market than target-based uh, screening through high throughput screening and the traditional target-based approaches, whereas the I main fast follower programs, the, the, the trend is somewhat reversed. So phenotypic screening, even when back in the 60s, has, has really played a major role and is also re re enjoying somewhat of a renaissance in terms of playing its part in high throughput screening. On the right hand side, you'll actually see that the market trend, if you like, or the pharmaceutical trend that uh, is, is witnessed in the uh, Swinney review is also evident at Evertech. So I've listed here actually a current review of the programs that are actively go ongoing within our group. So we have approximately 29 programs in, in vitro pharmacology. And for the, you can see here, for the most of these, the majority of these uh, programs have at least one phenotypic aspect involved within them. That would either be the primary assay itself or a supporting secondary assay involving primary tissue or primary cell models, really to prove uh, and confirm the activity of those compounds. So 16 of the programs we, we are running have a phenotypic emphasis. If you then look close at that 16 um, programs that are phenotypic based, um, the interesting aspect here is that the majority of those are actually run as an HTS format. So we're using at Evertech high content screening and phenotypic screening to really drive the identification of new chemical matter. So 11 of the 16 programs are really using phenotypic screens to identify the primary hit source. With the assays that we use for the HDS will also subsequently be, be used within the critical path through the um, hit to lead and lead optimization programs. So 
At EBITSA, we are absolutely seeing a, a continued growth and maintenance of phenotypic screens in the drug de uh, development value chain. Okay, hoping to get in the next slide. Um, Mark, okay. try exiting and re-clicking on the slide. Okay. So exiting, what, sorry? Uh, just uh, escape and re-click the slide. Nope. Ah, there we go. Okay. So we come now to the, the, the looking at the phenotypic screen, and particularly the benefits and challenges. Um, these go hand in hand, of course. So the real the benefits of phenotypic screening from either text perspective, like it probably, uh, I, I think the majority of, of people in the phenotypic environment will see, is really the access to pathophysiological background. So really looking at cells in an unbiased environment, we really want to access the disease-relevant cellular systems. 